In the last video, I talked about creating um, objects. And we dealt with creating objects and inherited objects, and I made a several videos on that. Um, we created a person object and then a student object. And the person object had attributes of a person, first name, middle name, last name, weight, weight, height, birth date. And we created all the gets and sets for the person object. Okay? And then we created an inherited object called the student object, which um, inherited the uh, extended the person object. So it inherited the all of the objects, uh, all the attributes of the person object, and then we added a, a an extra object or an extra attribute, which was the grades, which is an array. So the student object has all of the attributes of the person object, plus it has an array of grades that we add to it. Okay, so uh, then we uh, created an object, the student object, uh, created a new student object, we assigned that student object attributes, uh, so that set the first name to Robert Earl Lee, uh, gave him a height, gave him a weight, gave him a birth date, and then the last thing we did was we printed the information out, uh, we created a happy birthday Bob uh, method that would return the birth date, and when we ran that, we got the information out on Bob saying, you know, we got his, how old he was, we got his birth date, and we got all the information we asked for. Okay, the array and the average. Okay, so stepping from that, now we're going to move a little bit towards, okay, what about, what else can we do with this object? And Chapter 9 talked about writing to files. And so I'm going to talk about writing the files, these objects, to a file, the person and the student object. So I've recreated the person object here, but there's one more step I needed to do to it in order to be able to write the whole object to file is I need to make it serializable. Okay, so I added this here, implements serializable. That just means that you can write it to a file, or write it out in a serial fashion. When it does that, it puts a beginning and an end tag on it, and which designates this is the whole of an object. Okay. So I create my person, I make it, uh, I create my person class, and I make it serializable. I create my student class, same class, same attributes that we talked about last video, and we made that serializable. Okay, once we do that, then we can start writing it to a file. So let's talk about writing it to a file. So here I've, I've created, a, I've taken and I've created students. Um, I created an array of students. We talked about that a little bit last time. We only created an array of one. I've created an array of three different students here. I've instantiated the students, and now I'm assigning the values here. And you can see they all have a first name, a last name, weight, height, a birth date, a gender, a list of grades, which are all exactly the same because I copied and pasted, and the average grades. Okay? So, or we, I'm sorry, when we set the grades. So now we can look at how we're going to write this out to a file. Um, we've all worked with the file, creating a file object. So this should be all familiar to you right after chapter 9. File, out file equals new file, stuff.dat. Okay, so I'm going to create a file. The name of it's going to be stuff.dat. So I've created a file object. Now the next two lines are a little bit different. In, in the book it talked about um, uh, text, uh, you know, writing output to text and writing output to uh, binary, um, and then you can run a buffered output. Um, here we're going to wrap this in a file output stream, because we're going to stream this out, and then object output stream. Uh, okay, so we're going to take the file output stream, create a file output stream object, and it's going to go out to the file called stuff.dat, and then an object output stream basically going out to the file object, okay? And this is what allows us, this object output stream is what is, allows us to write the object out, okay? And so next, um, once we create the object output stream, uh, it's really simple. Uh, a simple for loop, because we're working with an array, a simple for loop, okay? Saying, okay, for these students up here, Object dot write, write the object. Okay, so uh, the out object output stream has a method called write object, and so I tell it what object to write, and this object could be any object that I create. 
it could be an array. In this case, we've created a class called students, an object called students, and we're writing that object to the file, and then we flush it out to the file. When we're done writing the whole array of objects to the file, we say object write.close, and we're done. With that, we can write all of the objects out to the file. Now, one thing I'm going to point out is I have this on here, throws files not found output exception. Let me remove those, and we'll see that we get some errors. Uh, NetBeans is going to catch some errors for us. Anytime you have a file output stream, you either have to throw it or enclose it in a try catch statement. I chose to just throw it there. I could put up here try and then down below here I could put and I could get fancy and go to the file output exception or I could just say oops, let's get it right here Okay, so we're throwing a catch here, and uh, if I wanted to add some text in here, I could say uh, Okay, so you notice I can, I can throw it up above, or I can use a try catch statement, try it, catch it, and uh, this will replace the throws statement and this will tell me at least that something out here is saying there was an error rather than destroying it and continuing on. So now I've saved that and oops, let's save it and run it and voila it was successful. Let's go take a look. I'm looking at my data files where I'm saving all my stuff. There's a stuff.data. It was just created at 10.04 which is what time it is. If I open it up, you can see that this is obviously not a text file. Um, I see a, it's a serial data to file stat student. Um, I see Bob Barker. I see Jill Garcia. I see Betty Boop. If I go and make changes to this file now, it would corrupt it actually because Notepad is not a, a binary. Um, is not a binary editor, so if I were to go in here and change this to Bob Berker or something like that, uh, it would actually corrupt the file. So I'm not going to make any changes to it, but you can take a look at it and it won't hurt it. So, and back to here, so we've created our object, we wrote our objects out to the file, so let's talk about reading the files in from the, from the, uh, uh, reading objects in from the file. So if you look at the familiarity here, I've created a, uh, a serial input demo here. And here we created the uh, file out file, uh, file output stream, and we created the object output stream. Well, it would just make sense when we go to read it in, we have file in file, which is what I'm calling it, and then we have the file input stream object and the object input stream object. And we've got object.read. So what do you suppose we have to do to read in the object? Well, again, Java makes this real simple. We're going to create a simple loop. Um, now, again, first I have to create, I have to create the array up on top first. I don't have to instantiate them, but I have to create the array of students, and I have to create this first in order to hold the objects that I'm reading in. Okay, so I'm going to read in objects. I have to have some place to, to some place to assign them to, and I want to assign them to a student object. So. I create the array first, and here's where I instantiate it. I, uh, I read through here, and I say, okay, student i equals, and then I cast whatever's being read in. Now remember, uh, this file could have string objects in it. It could have array objects. It could have the computer doesn't know what kind of objects you're reading in until you tell it. And so here I'm saying, okay, these are student objects that you're reading in, and assign it to this student in the, the first student object in the array. Okay? So object read dot read object, object read dot read object. Read it in. It should be a student object. Read it into the student uh, array. Okay? 
once those are read in, uh, all we have to do is we can work with them. That's all there is to reading it to file, writing it to file, and reading it from a file. Uh, once we've read it from a file, we can work with it. Uh, it's already uh, loaded into our array. And so now I can uh, go ahead and output it to uh, the screen. For, and so here I've got a little simple for loop statement that says uh, string output equals get the first name, get the last name, get the birth date, uh, get the gender, and then uh, I'm even going to grab the uh, array. We're doing a raise to string and uh, pull the average grade. And those are all methods that we created in the earlier videos. So let's go ahead and save that and run it here. And while uh, you can see that I've pulled all the information back in from the file, I've displayed it out on the page. So um, I hope you get a picture of the power of creating objects. Now, moving into the next chapter 10, we're going to be talking about the uh, J option or the, the J panel objects and all the objects in there. And it talks, the chapter talks a lot about inheritance. So hopefully the student person inheritance will help a little bit and um, working with objects here. So uh, expansion of chapter uh, nine. Now that can you read text and binary data, you can read serializable data, complete objects. You can write them to a file, you can read them from a file and use them afterwards. You could also take these objects and write them into a database, split them up, write it into a da database, create a, a method that will read it and write it into a database. So, all right, hope that helps you understand objects a little better. And again, it expands a little bit on chapter nine.